Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In today's episode of Trust Me, I'm Blacksmith, I'm going to show you guys at home how to make your very own top filler. So, uh, me and Elliot made this today. Elliot was doing some smooth striking for me, thank you very much today. Elliot, um, I've taken him home now, uh, but uh, it was a bit noisy here. We're going to film the outro together, but uh, unfortunately that's not happened. Uh, but big thanks, Elliot. Uh, so, this turned out lovely, stoked about this. Um, really, really, really nice little um, top fuller, works really well, and uh, the heat treatment on this one went swimmingly. So we've got all this done in about three hours, three, four hours in total, something like that. Uh, okay, cool, uh, piece of fork truck time, as always, um, and we're gonna turn this into the fuller today. Uh, I'm gonna use this H13 slitting punch. This is the one um, we used to do the mortises for the mortise and tenon joints on the crane. Um, so basically what I've done is I found the centre and then measured this and this is uh, about an inch or 25 mil across. I uh, found the centre of this piece and then marked either side of it uh, so know where to hit. Uh, that's also central on here. This is a piece of 30 by 40 by 100 mil uh, stock uh, which for you Americans is an inch and five eighths by an inch and a quarter and um, it's about an inch and a half in here, which is in millimetres. I didn't measure that bit, did I? Oh, it's four inches long as well. Uh, it is... Uh, for 38-ish mil. All right, cool. I'm going to get this hot now, and then we're going to punch this through by hand. Um, Elliot's here, and he's going to give me a hand. So let's get on. Okay. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this out first, so I'm just going to get this in between this centres here. Just give it a little tap. Now this, um, this punch is H13, so... It's, um, it's going to give me a bit of an advantage. If you're using um, a regular... I say regular... More of a, a more commonly available tool steel, um, 4140 or something like that, a non-air hardening. You want to be quite, uh, once it starts burying itself in there a bit, you want to be quenching it off after every couple of heats, but I don't recommend you do that with an air hardening tool steel. It'll bite you. It will. So I'm just going to start the work off here, just so that when I get this up to a good temperature, I'm not messing around looking for a mark. Okay, so a few taps that way. Turn it, and then I'm going to turn over. And the reason I'm doing that, A, is to keep the hole straight or central at least, anyway. That's this turn. And the reason for this turn is to keep... Allow me to take advantage of this heat. Um, the anvil is gonna start soaking up some of that heat from where it's sitting on it. Now, I wanna be checking the tooling as well as it's going in. Now, if you're uh, if you're using a if you're using a um, normal steel, like I said before, get rid of some of this scale. You want to be um, quenching this off after every couple of hits. Oh, it's hot this one. Okay. Hopefully, we'll be through on this one. He says. good technique to learn is to be able to turn your material without having to pick your tongs up, speed you up like um, You could make a short, slightly shorter piece of tooling for this job as well. Um, it will, um, like that, that's getting too hot now. slightly shorter piece of uh, tooling that was held in a pair of tongs or maybe even welded onto a bar would do. 
much better. Um, I'd be getting a better swing on the... Hmm, I was going, hoping to be through on this heat, but... Give me a next one. Oh no. Oh, sparkly, sparkly. That's here. Okay. If that's not through this time, there we are, it was loose. So I'm just going to work this slug backwards and forwards until it decides to leave. Come on. There we go. Right, that's our slug. Just there, little tiny thin thing. And then, I was gonna pick that with my hands then. <laughs> There's our hole. So that's the material that we've lost through this process. And that's our hole. So I'm not going to be able to get the hammer, uh, the hammer eye drift in the hole just yet. So uh, it's got a sledgy, and I'm just going to hold the stock, put a flat on top. Yep. Yep. One more. Turn that over. And also try and keep it straight. Okay. Yep. 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 One. Yeah. All right. The reason I've moved is I can get. Much better swings on the material. Like this, that I could if I would at the ample. Right, other side this time. Same again, just going to drive this through. Cool, right, we're good. I'm just going to loosen this off. I'm going to bring it up to the anvil, just give the faces a couple of strokes, and then hopefully that will come nice. Right, I'm going to pop this back in the fire, and then we'll start working on the cheeks. Okay, so opposite side yet again, got a bit of coke in the hole there, I'll knock that out. So I've stretched the hole that I've made now to the full size of the eye. Come over to my hand and I'm going to grab her around the hammer and I'm just going to start looking at the top half here where the grip's got the most contact and there'll be a gap on this side and you don't want to forge that. You'll push the eye. Okay, it's a bit cold now, and a little, uh, a little trade secret. What you've done is you've crushed the sides of the cheeks round the eye. It's going to be very tight. Drive the eye in, add the hammer to the skin, then loosen the cheeks out of the faces. And it should come off relatively simple. Okay, same again. So this time, I'm just going to find an orifice on the anvil. Uh, on the swage block that's going to accept those cheeks. If you don't have that, you'll have to make yourself a bit of a bolster. And I'm not looking to drive this in very deep, I just want a couple of taps in. And back over to the anvil. Rounding hammer again. Pull those 
choose that again. I'm trying to do two things here. I'm trying to get this bit, this bit here flush with the edge, and I'm going to try and force a point in. So when I'm holding the material, holding it down at an angle slightly off. Um, something else to be aware of is being prepped for your work. You want your tools ready and waiting for you. So you're not losing that valuable heat. So I'm just going to get Luke here right there with a uh, flatter. Just going to get, yep. 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 Oh. One. One. Yep. 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 One. close to somewhere that I want it. So what I'm going to now do is just going to bring back to this cheek up to the anvil face and then I'm going to hold this yeah, set hammer up to it. I'm just going to take a little bit of thickness out of here. Probably try and take it down. Big one. Bigger than that. Big boy swings. Yep. Probably going to try and take it down to about square-ish. Yep. 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 One. One. Two. Two. Yep. 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 One. So I'm just holding this in at a bit of an angle. Yeah. 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 Okay, back in the fire. So a couple more of those big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. One, 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 and I'm pushing this in tight against the face of the anvil here, yep, one, 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 one more, last one for this round. Lovely. Okay, so this is going to be our striking face, and I. It's roughly square. Yeah, it's not too bad. So that's going to be our striking face. And the next job is we're going to now pull this side out into our fuller. So I just said to Eddie, I said, Eddie, what's your Smith and striking like? And he said, which side? So <laughs> loads of confidence for this bit. Right, I'm going to hold the work up at a bit of an angle. I'm going to call Elliot. Too bad. Yep. And I was worried. Yep. 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 
fire. So um, there she is in all her glory. Uh, this is a striking face, and then obviously this is your fuller in end. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat treat this. Uh, basically, I'm going to get the whole thing hot. I'm going to quench it in oil, um, and then um, I'm going to put this back end back in the fire. I'm going to get this warm and just allow the heat to creep through and hopefully get some temper colours into this end and then we'll handle it then it's done and then we can use it for the job that we need to do if you want to know how to do the grinding of the faces i didn't show it in this video there's a reason i have a whole video dedicated to grinding tooling the processes that you need to follow to do something like this are in that video i'll try and put a card it'll be up in one of those corners i can't remember which corner it goes in uh, i'll do that and um, hopefully uh, you can watch that and then be able to do this as well um, I will show you some of the heat treating. I'm not going to show all of it as well. I have a whole series on heat treating. Um, another card somewhere up there. <laughs> so cool. All right then, um, let's get on and do this. Okay, so what I've done is I've revealed this side and um, I'm just gonna stick it in the fire, this end in the fire, and I get this hot. My desired uh, effect is to get this about a reddish temperature, uh, because then that'll make this side soft again after this has been heat treated, because I heat treated the whole thing. And the reason for that is you don't get any areas where you've got lines which can crack. So you see a lot of people gas heating one side and then quenching it, and that's gonna put, um, put an area where there is a very harsh change in temperature, and you don't want that, that that'll, that'll crack if you're not careful. Um, so put this end in the fire, Heat's going to disperse through. Once this end starts becoming a darkish blue, and with this end cold, relatively coldish, I'm going to dunk it in some water and we'll be done. Just wait till we get blue right at the top, and then I'm going to quench that off in the water.
I'm super stoked with this thing. Uh, it came out absolutely amazingly. I just kept it super simple. Uh, it's more like um, one of my uh, straight peen hammers than it is an actual full up. But um, to be honest with you, it's come out really, really nice. I'm really happy. Um, you can blow your own trumpet sometimes, um, and sometimes you have to. <laughs> and I'm blowing it today. Love it. Right, uh, brilliant. I really enjoyed this today. Thank you for joining me. Then again, thank you so much, Elliot. And thank you again, Elliot and Luke, for yesterday. They came up and they gave me a hand doing a few little bits of bobs. You will have seen Luke in the video before where I made the um, hammer eye and, and the bolster plate jobby. Um, they, he really helped the other day, the pair of them. They did a really great job. So thank you, guys. And um, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this bad boy, which I love, and um, also let me know uh, what you thought of the video. Um, I think that's everything. So thank you for joining me, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you are a subscriber, remember to ring that bell for notifications, because it will tell you every time I make videos. I make videos as often as humanly possible. I try to do them at least twice a week, and if you get a few more, you get a few more, uh, but pretty much twice a week, and then there's a live every now and then. Um, and that, my friends, is everything. So thank you for joining me. I'll leave a link up here to um, the face grinding video. I will leave a link down here to fitting handles. Uh, this here is my Patreon, great way to support the channel. And this one here is a subscribe button. Thank you for joining me, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.